Welcome back, I'm Brainy Beaver and tonight we have a truther named Terra Times and he has an issue with the amount of fuel that airlines say they consume during a flight? I assume that he thinks this is some sort of ploy for them to make record profits in one of the tightest margin markets in the world. This video was so easy to dissect I didn't even break a sweat. Not that that's a bad thing, I mean, who has an issue with a wet beaver, you know? We have been told that the fuel for a flight consists of about 50% of the ticket price. We have accepted this information for many, many years. What if that information was wrong? What if the manufacturers knew this and chose to keep it quiet? We have all experienced walking up the airplane steps, stopping in the queue and looking around. We look at the wings, we look at the engines, and marvel at the size of these amazingly powerful pieces of modern technology. Sometimes we also see the fuel being pumped into the wings. We think nothing of it. But what happens if we put our common sense hat on and take another look? I mean, off the top of my head, I feel like that would be both a very, very large and over-encompassing conspiracy and a huge safety problem when it comes to pilots doing weight and balance before a flight. But I should allow him to continue because this is just getting fired up. The Airbus A380 is a truly amazing feat of engineering. In a purely bums on seats configuration, this aircraft can take almost 900 passengers. A typical coach takes about 50 passengers, so the A380 can take approximately 18 coach loads of people. That's a lot of people. According to their own specifications, the A380 can take 323,525 litres of jet fuel in the wing tanks. That works out at roughly 260 metric tonnes, or 130 tonnes of fuel in each wing. I'll let that sink in for a minute because that is very, very heavy. Oh no, here we go with the fear of big numbers again. What is it with these flat earthers that can't handle big numbers? As soon as the numbers sound big, they get scared and scream fake. It's really rather quite sad. Okay, so fuel weighs a lot. Did you know that a large cruise ship can use up to 250 tons of fuel per day? 250 tons per day. That's crazy. So the next time you go on a cruise, think about the fact that you could be burning almost an entire A380 fuel load every day. That is the same as 16 red London double-decker buses on each wing. Or to put it another way, a herd of 22 fully grown elephants on each wing. How does that sound to you? Pretty incredible, right? I mean, that's pretty fucking incredible, I will say. That means that you... Oh, oh, hold on, let me get get my notes here, hold on. Yeah, yeah, that means that you must have pulled out a calculator and did some simple math. I checked your numbers and they're actually correct, so I found that to be somewhat incredible too. So, I mean, really, we should celebrate. We're good, streaky! Yeah! But you can look this information up in the specifications and check it for yourself. Most of us have seen a plane refueling. They connect one or two hoses underneath the wing, connect that to a pump on board a refueling truck, which then pumps the fuel from underground tanks. This takes about 45 minutes for a full load. We never see the amount being pumped because the tanks are not visible. Let's make them visible and see how that looks. Now, are you ready for some flurf dishonesty? Well, I found the exact video he pulled that refueling clip from, and if you simply keep watching, and you know he did, you can see that they simultaneously attach under the second wing and also hook up two connections to each of them. So he has already been unforthcoming with the information he has found. I wonder if this continues. It would take 16 of these 20,000 litre trucks to fill the A380. That is not a 20,000 liter fuel truck. That's either a 40,000 or a 50,000 liter fuel truck. And this is a 20,000 liter truck. Your research is starting to show holes, bro. Where does all this fuel go? 
In the wings, you say? OK, let's take a look at the wings, and you tell me where you think it all goes. This is the A380 wing. Pretty huge. Let's put a fuel track next to it. And another. And another. And another. And four more. Just for this wing. Another eight go into the other wing. Can you see what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I can see that you decided to actually use a 20,000-ish liter fuel truck this time. Congratulations. Also, the angle of those images is deceiving because the rear of the truck is far closer, making it far bigger. In fact, you can see he's simply matched up the size of a person sitting in the truck to one sitting in the cockpit. And then he's not even taking any consideration into the distance from the nose tip to the wings, which is generally a good portion of the airplane. This is a poor way of determining something's interior volume. Now let's take a look at the wings on these aircraft. This is the new Dreamliner taking off in a spectacular fashion. Observe the thickness of the wings. How many fuel trucks would fit in those wings? OK, let's take a look at the fill rate. This is the new Dreamliner taking off in a spectacular fashion. Observe the thickness of the wings. This is the A380 wing. Pretty huge. This is the new Dreamliner taking off in a spectacular fashion. That's it. You're off the road. Never again. Now let's take a look at the wings on these aircraft. This is the new Dreamliner taking off in a spectacular fashion. Observe the thickness of the wings. How many fuel trucks would fit in those wings? OK, let's take a look at the fill rate. That, that's a fucking Boeing, you dumbass! It's not even the same airplane! <laughs> to fully fill the A380 takes approximately 45 minutes. To fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool takes about four days. I think people are going to be really excited what, what that is two and a half million liters of water. The capacity of the A380 is about 8% of the volume. 8% of 96 hours is 7.6 hours. That's a lot longer than 45 minutes. So maybe the filling equipment is much faster for a plane. Let's take a look. This is filling a swimming pool. And this is filling an aircraft. To fill the tanks of an A380 in 45 minutes, you would have to have a pump and a hose that could pump 7,189 litres of fuel per minute. Let's look at something that pumps at about half that speed. <laughs> nice, good representation, right? Yeah, he, uh, he shows you a nozzle that you couldn't stick your wang in the end of. That's a good. That's a good example. You know, they're one for one ratio. I like it. And besides, I found multiple examples of people saying that when they filled Olympic-sized swimming pools as like employees for different companies and whatnot, that a lot of times they were actually limited to a certain flow rate to fill an Olympic pool because of the fact that they would rob so much water from the local town that it would actually leave them without any water. So that makes complete sense to me. So really, the time to fill is a terrible example of how fast something is running as a filler. Now the plane. Now the fire hose. Uh, here, I fixed it for you. Don't you mean here there's the plane times four and then the fire hose? Don't you think that filling that wing with that sort of pressure would just rip a hole right through the top? It's only made of aluminium. Oi, jackass. It's not made of fucking pop can material. Today they're preparing to lift and place one of the largest of the 20 aluminium panels. 34 meters long and weighing in at more than one ton. The size of a large car's petrol tank is about 70 liters. Don't you sometimes wish that your petrol tank was bigger so you wouldn't have to fill up so often? There are reasons why this is so. Number one, the weight would drastically reduce the performance of the car. And number two, the amount of fuel sloshing about in the tank would seriously interfere with the road holding whilst going around corners. 
This doesn't seem to be the case with aircraft using vast quantities of fuel. Let's take a look at what large bodies of liquid does to road holding. Not a pretty sight. Now let's look at a couple of landings of aircraft and try to imagine hundreds of tons of fuel sloshing about in the wings. I think you might be getting the gist of what I'm trying to say. It is ridiculous to think that these aircraft take off, fly, bank, maneuver and land with large amounts of liquid moving in all directions. So this idiot has never heard of a baffle? Well, here are some examples of baffles that can be found inside large tanks of any sort that are meant to carry liquid and travel. Remember that airplane wing? Well, if you look, you'll see that it's almost entirely a fuel tank in some sections. And, oh my god, baffles! Fun fact, acetylene bottles used to be filled with Portland cement because it made air pockets much like an Aero chocolate bar. This allowed the liquid to always be in small quantities for travel because acetylene is very unstable and if it was all together in one tank, it could literally explode from an impact or the tank possibly tipping over in travel. Now they use some sort of acrylic that does the same thing. Alright, what else you got for me? Rather than explaining this myself, I will let this short video do the work for me. Observe that at the end they actually say that the secondary flow, which is only compressed air, is the major contributor to the engine's thrust. Hear that, boys? What is it? Just another narrow body aircraft. Hey, my atoms are shaking. Strange. It sounds far, but I bet my last proton, that beast is much closer than you think. Hold on, people. It's a leap powered aircraft. A leap into the unknown. What on earth is a leap? Something you sure haven't seen before. Everybody get ready. We're going in. Someone please tell me what just happened? That someone touched you? The engine makes a plane move forward. Thrust is produced by air being pulled in by the fan blades. Then this air is ejected at greater speed through the exhaust, creating the required pushing force. This is a principle of Newton's law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So he seems to think this is some sort of gotcha moment where he tells us all that the engine uses way less fuel than they tell us by using the video where they tell us how little fuel they use and how they manage to do that. It really is remarkable how stupid this person really is. Honestly, I'm sick of listening to him and for sanity reasons I'm moving on now. Oh yeah, and the plane has another fuel tank in the tail wing, so you know, I forgot to mention that. Had it in my back pocket. Forgot to add it. I hope this has been more entertaining than my day of listening to him drone on to create this was for you. And as such, if you could give me a like, maybe think about hitting subscribe, and tell me in the comments if you think I got something wrong, or if you have any experience fueling large aircraft, your comments would be invaluable. Thank you all for coming, do check out my Patreon and think about supporting the channel, it'll make you feel all fuzzy inside. Swear to God, Scout's honor. Anyways, good night, guys, thanks for coming.